the best chance for you to be successful is to own your own success. Welcome to Price Plow. What's going on, Price Plow Nation? It's Josh Shaw from J. Shaw Consulting, again for another segment for Mike. We decided a few months ago that uh, every couple of weeks he would ask me a question based around something that's on his mind or one of Price Plow Nation's uh, questions, and he wanted to kind of get my perspective on it. On this episode of Mike asks, whatever we want to kind of call this. He got a question from Price Plow Nation around kind of the future of specialty retail in kind of the sports nutrition and nutritional supplement space. And he's basically saying, hey, assume this person uh, works for a specialty retail like GNC or Vitamin Shop, and assume this person is a little bit um, afraid that they're not going to have a job in, in five to 10 years. And what should they be doing now to prepare for this future. And Mike also kind of threw a caveat out there and said, hey, uh, assume this person is not charismatic um, or sexy, but uh, I don't know if this person is either one of those things. And quite honestly, I don't think either of those things really matter that much to some of the solutions or, or things that I'm gonna be talking about in this video but I know where Mike was going with those caveats. So let's unpack this question a little bit um, because it is a little bit long and, and I think it'll make this answer a little bit easier for you guys to understand. Firstly, will GNC and Vitamin Shop be around in five to 10 years? And five to 10 years is, is kind of a, a big swing because things could change drastically in those five years of a um, spread. But I'm gonna kind of go out on a limb and say that both Vitamin Shop and GNC will be in business. Now, will they look anything like they do today? I definitely think they won't. Um, I think both will be looking at kind of the, a continuous store optimization plan and the retail footprint um, that both of these retailers have will be much smaller. We're already seeing that today. I don't think that is going to a stop anytime soon. I think all retailers, even the biggest retailers, um, are looking at their kind of retail real estate portfolio and deciding, do we need all of this space to service the customers in the same way that we've been doing um, for you know countless no number of years? And the answer to that question is usually no, because with e-commerce and just kind of what they call omni-channel, which is both e-commerce and um, aspects of in-store and just kind of being everything to everyone as a retailer, um, you don't really need to always have this massive amount of square footage for your, um, for your physical store. So if this person uh, is working in the stores, um, they need to assume that a great number of these locations will not um, either exist or will look uh, much different um, in the future. Both a GNC and, and, a, and a vitamin shop primarily, I believe, rent uh, most of their space, if not all of their space. Uh, so they do have much flexibility. So I don't expect, um, I don't expect a lot of um, the locations to have to adapt long term. If we're just kind of you know, playing the odds here and you work in the front of the house of a GNC or a vitamin shop, I would say that yes, there's still gonna be store locations, but there won't be as many. So you just kind of have to keep that in the back of your mind as, uh, as a potential kind of risk layer, or your, your job security. The next kind of part of that is, is just kind of, the question was asked in a way that um, makes me believe that this person wants to work for Vitamin Shop or GNC uh, for the next five or 10 years. This kind of thought pattern is, is just kind of odd to me, especially if this person is uh, my age or maybe even younger, uh, you tend not to work at jobs for five to 10 years. And, and actually a lot of the uh, payroll data and some of like the internet job boards like Indeed actually say that uh, it's best to kind of change jobs every two to three years, which is uh, counter to a lot of the theories that were out there um, the last probably five or seven years. But what they're kind of saying is that through kind of analyzing all the payroll data, people that do change jobs every two to three years actually do get paid more money over time. And I think that comes down to one, 
Um, that person's willing to kind of give their all to a job for a couple of years and then they end up jumping to a better opportunity and somebody wants to give them a better opportunity so they go with it. They want to make sure they learn kind of by a diverse set of skills at different type of jobs with different cultures, different leadership teams. Um, they kind of see they kind of see jobs a little bit differently. Now I know there's a flip side to this and I know that people can look at this and say every two to three years people are changing jobs because they're just not good at their jobs and they're getting fired. But I think at this point, um, most of the data is saying that changing jobs um, is actually a good thing. It's not viewed as bad anymore. We're obviously not in the era of IBM or GM or GE or all these types of companies that have been around for 100 years. People clock in and they clock out when they're retired and they have a pension and they're, they're dealing with that. That stuff doesn't happen anymore. So I wanted to make sure I address that part of the question because I want to put some information out there that contradicts just conventional wisdom on, on changing jobs. And then the biggest part of this question, the most important part of this question is, what can I do now to prepare? So if we assume that you, know, you potentially could or you have a good chance of losing your job in the next five to 10 years and you are gonna try to stay at this retailer as long as possible, what can you do now to prepare for this world that I guess you envision in five to 10 years. Not to get on my high horse or anything and not to share a lot of kind of personal stories, but I wholeheartedly believe in kind of continuous learning and having this kind of fierce curiosity of life. I think that those two things sets you up for success uh, for a lifetime. I think if you believe that you know your education stopped when you finished high school or maybe when you finished college, you're kind of dead in the water at this point. The world is constantly changing. That's the only kind of constant thing in this world is change. And if you're not willing to adapt and learn and, and kind of be curious about these new changes, you're gonna be always stuck in this backpedaling, looking at history in this super positive way and, and wondering why I can't go back to simpler times. It's just not gonna be that way. And to be successful working at a retailer, interested in sports nutrition, nutritional supplements, um, what are the three paths to success in the next five to 10 years? So first one is, is kind of what I do, what Mike does, what you guys follow probably a lot of YouTubers or um, people on Instagram uh, do, and that is become a creative become a content creator, put your thoughts out there, put you know, your energy out there, put your passions out into the world and kind of see what feedback you get. One of the hardest things for like, you know, robots or artificial intelligence, automation, all those types of things that are gonna come in the next five to 10 years, one of the hardest things for them to wrap their heads around is the, the idea of creativity. If you are kind of worried about any of those things, a good place to kind of sell in at is creating content, being a creative. And you don't need to be on video. And, and Mike, I think, threw the caveat out there of not being charismatic and sexy because he didn't want me to default straight into being a content creator. But I think that at, in today's age, I mean, I'm... I don't think I'm the sexiest person. Uh, I think Mike would agree he's not as well, but uh, we put our thoughts out there continuously and we get really good feedback out there because we are not necessarily selling sex and we're not selling charisma. We're selling our thoughts as being thought leaders in a certain space that we are super passionate about. I assume you are also passionate about things and you can find that niche and really exploit it. You could be the utmost expert in Pokemon cards or uh, the utmost uh, expert in Big 12 conference uh, college sports. You could build podcasts, you could build blogs, you could build uh, video, you could build all kinds of different things and be great uh, and make a really good living over time. Well, caution that you have to be patient and understand that you need to put a lot of thoughts out there for people to start validating you. but it's good to kind of get started in doing those things today. Um, and you'll, you'll honestly find that it's extremely rewarding regardless what kind of vanity metrics you get out of it. And this creates a lot of flexibility for you. It creates a lot of value in the market. People will ultimately come to you for a lot of things over you feeling like you're always having to be at the mercy of somebody else's um, somebody else's actions in the market. The second one is kind of around like this emotional intelligence. Again, like with, 
robots and, and I know I didn't talk a lot about that at the kind of the intro, but if we're talking five to 10 years, there is going to be a lot of change in kind of the artificial intelligence and automation and robots and, and all that kind of stuff that's going to shape the way retail looks, business looks, even the most technical subjects of like functional um, consumer packaged goods, uh, you know, nutritional supplements, all those things that um, will be a little bit more insulated at the beginning um, than some other industries. I, I still think it's going to um, take over and reshape a lot of that. So I would suggest that you think about service outside of just physical retail, um, you know, if you are passionate about you know fitness and health and nutritional supplements and everything, it's probably pretty natural for you to maybe work um, on the uh, emotional intelligence side of the industry if you want to be kind of a physical trainer or um, all those types of things. Because I think all of us will agree that you can go on any website, find any diet, look up your macros, do all those types of things and realize how to lose weight. Even though we all are equipped with that knowledge to be able to do that, the vast majority of the world struggles to uh, apply that and execute that on a day-to-day -day basis. It's because they don't understand the kind of the brain uh, emotional side of, of kind of goal setting and kind of achieving goals. And I think that if you can position yourself to be able to uh, be an expert or, or be a helpful person in that area, you'll have a lot of success with kind of this next phase um, in business. And then thirdly, is just surrounding like technology in general. You know, we were talking around specialty retailers, physical retailers, will I have a job in five to 10 years? I'm assuming the question is shaped in a way that is kind of analog and it's approached. And what I'll say is if somebody is stuck in analog, you know, focused business, I'll say that if you can put yourself in a position to learn some of the digital side of things and in the, you know, in the initial kind of phase right now, web, you know, what I call kind of web 2.0, learning social media skills, learning digital marketing skills, understanding those kind of technical digital, um, digital skills of business um, and understanding though that's how, you know, business is going today that's going to help you position yourself to be surrounded by the right people that are going to kind of get you to the next phase of business. This is kind of the, you know, the web 3.0, which is more, you know, voice, um, you know, voice assistance and all the applications that go along with that, but also with retail moving towards kind of uh, augmented reality or virtual reality. If you are, you know, in analog world right now, and in five to 10 years, you're gonna to move to web 3.0, but you're still in kind of analog, you're never gonna be surrounded by the right people to get you the right skills, to position you in the right way, to be successful in the future. So this is kind of a, a practice of, you know, networking and, and kind of getting yourself positioned in a way that's gonna be useful for you um, in the future. One area, that I didn't want to default to, and I don't want you guys to initially default to, is straight to like pure play entrepreneurship. I think a lot of people today think entrepreneurship is sexy and that entrepreneurship is easy and everybody has the right to be an entrepreneur. But what I'll say is that when you are beginning, especially if you're not used to running your own business or doing, um, you know, operating your own schedules and, and kind of owning your own world, it's hard to kind of move from somebody running your life and as a retail employee and doing all those things and then turning into a pure play like entrepreneur. So there's an in between here that, you know, you can do the side hustle aspect of it and all the things that I kind of talked about on the, you know, the passive success can all be done as a side hustle. Um, you don't need to go full force and quit your job and go all in on these things. You can dip your toes in both until you're comfortable enough to make the leap to these other areas that you believe are going to be more um, useful to you in the future. Being a creative or content creator, grab your phone. We all have $1,200 phones in our pockets. Grab it. You know, they have great mics. They have great, um, they have great cameras on them. Just start talking, putting content out there. You probably have a laptop. If you don't have a laptop, again, you have that $1,200 computer in your pocket. Um, write, post, do all those things on your off time, service-based things. Again, that's easy enough. I mean, you can honestly start that up. That's just taking your time, you know, out of your day. Everybody has time in their day. They can always cut their schedule a little bit more to 
Um, prioritize things that are important to them. If you believe that's going to be important for you, prioritize it. And then thirdly, the technology side of it, you know, there is tons of free learning. There's meetups. There's um, there's groups. There's all kinds of things you could be doing. You could honestly, you, you know, go into your uh, work today, ask for you know, some of the employees' um, emails at corporate that handle some of this kind of technology stuff at GNC or Vitamin Shop, say, hey, I'd love to learn. Is there any way when you're in town or, you know, at, when I'm in town at your corporate area that I can come and learn for a week and, you know, whatever it is, just put yourself in positions to win. Regardless of where GNC, Vitamin Shop, the world, I, I can't predict I'm not smart enough to do that even though I attempted to do it here. The best chance for you to be successful is to own your own success. So if you put yourself in positions and you understand you're the master of your own destiny, you will do great things. If you are always going to be at the mercy of somebody else's destiny and you are always going to you know, think you only need to clock in nine to five and never put in extra effort during your day, you're going to be struggling. So I know this is probably way different of content than you guys are used to on Pricefly. I hopefully you guys got some value out of this. If you guys are interested in more of this type of content, uh, jump over to my channel. Um, I know Mike will probably link it below. Um, I would love to have you guys over on my channel. I know it's not necessarily uh, supplement reviews and I'm not always talking about uh, the next pre-workout or energy drink. But I think there's a lot of value um, on my channel and I would really love you know, to have you guys over there. So I'll flip this back over to Mike if he has any more thoughts. If not, I want to thank you guys for taking some time out of your day to listen to me and I'll hopefully see you guys in a couple of weeks. Welcome to Price Plow.